I'm Jace, and this is Creative Cow tutorial on making uh, design elements grow inside of After Effects. I get asked how I do this stuff a ton, so I put this together for you to kind of show you how you can do it on your own. And here's the basic example of uh, what we're going to be creating. And as you can see, these kind of shapes are really hard to just simply mask on or to use the write-on effect in its default settings, so I'm going to teach you a different way of doing it. The basic steps for this piece are finding and simplifying the element, preparing the element or cutting it apart into its individual pieces, then animating it in After Effects using the write-on effect and also offsetting the anchor point and animating its scale for some of the leaves and other parts of it, and then kind of complicating things which is really just mirroring everything so that it looks more complicated than it really is. So you can probably figure it out if you know After Effects pretty well just by those steps. If not, follow along for the next 20 or so minutes and I'll go into a lot of detail about how to do this yourself. First question is always, where do you start? I usually start with a document that I've created with just a ton of fonts in it. And these are like all ornamental fonts that I've collected. And this just allows me to kind of go in here to this Photoshop document, find the one I want, copy, paste it into another document, and start going from there. So these, most of these fonts are a collection called Lime Ornaments. And I've got the link on the site accelerator.com. So check that out for the link to uh, a lot of different uh, resources for fonts and stuff like that. Um, and the thing that we're going to use is this guy right here. And so I usually just highlight it and copy it and bring it into a new document. Oops, let's get back to here. New document and we can set it to a, uh, a DV screen set since we're going to be animating this, but it's not really that important since what we're doing is um, we're going to change it all around later, so it doesn't really matter. But Paste it in here. Let's change the color. I like to work with uh, either black or white, so I'm going to change this to black here and just scrub this value up so I can see it. And with this kind of a thing, I'll typically like to work with it larger than I'll use it in its final uh, animation. Okay. So now we got it big enough. You can see if I've got it at 100%, it's really big. Now, the first thing to look at is the shape of this. This is a really complex shape. I mean, there's tons of stuff overlapping other things. So the given piece that you chose may have been simpler, or it may have been uh, more complex than this, but the general rules still apply. And uh, so the first thing you want to do is try to simplify it in your head. First thing I'm going to do is I, I think it should be rotated. So Control T or uh, Command T on a Macintosh, so I can rotate it around. It's also a little bit off, uh, not exactly perfect. That's OK. And um, so I'm going to look at this the way I want it to grow on. I basically want to start from this side and grow it around like this. Then another one takes over, curves around like that. Looks like this one comes around, curves, and another one. So there's basically you got one, two, three, uh, four different uh, main pieces or vines, I guess you could call them. And then there's leaves coming off of those, a whole bunch of leaves. And uh looks like a flower right here. So I've, I've basically got this into vines, leaves, and a flower. Simple enough. Now, there's a number of ways of making this kind of appear to grow on. In some of my other training, I actually will convert the font to a shape or a work path. And what th that does is basically it's no longer a font. It's an actual vector shape here that will translate into After Effects as a mask. And then you can animate uh, different properties of the mask, like the mask expansion. And that'll give kind of this you know, growing effect. But it won't allow me to grow individual leaves, and especially when stuff is overlapping. It's, it's better for really simple things like um, petals and flowers and that kind of stuff. For something this complex, what we actually need to do is rasterize the layer. So I'm going to step back and uh, just duplicate this so that I've got my original there. Don't want to touch that. And I'm going to right click on this or control click on a Mac and rasterize the type. 
that gives me just a basic regular layer that I can go in and start uh, you know changing the actual pixels which is what I'm going to do so the reason that I need to change the pixels is because I've got to separate each main component out of this onto its own layer basically and then add in the leaves and stuff like that onto their own layer so I'm kind of deconstructing this actually so what I'm going to do is make um, a copy of this so now I've got my reference original and basically turn that off so these two I'm going to put into their own folder or actually just group it into a smart object so those are still there and uh, if you're not sure what smart objects are take my tutorials at accelerator.com and uh, they're really powerful so let me turn that off and now I've got just this basic shape now let's start separating this out so I'm gonna go for this little section here first let me rename this to full just duplicate that and zoom in on this. I'm holding down uh, the control and the spacebar key and that allows me to just kind of draw a marquee around whatever I want. Double click the magnifying glass to get back to 100%. Hit the spacebar to kind of pan around and uh, then I usually like to default to be on this um, the V key or the move tool right here. Hitting the V key will jump me back to that. So that's basically what I use a lot during this. So uh, let's select using good old-fashioned selection tool right here. to rough around um, what I see is this vine and its corresponding leaves only and it doesn't have to be too perfect but it does have to get all this stuff like so and I want that on a new layer so I'm going to do control J that'll copy that selection to a new layer now if I turn off the full one you'll see that now all I have is this vine, its leaves, and some junk that we need to get rid of. This is the overlapping junk. So the first thing I want to get rid of is this uh, junk from the other layers. So let me zoom in on that. And I'll just start using the eraser tool with a hard, oops, not that, this eraser tool, with a hard edge brush. And you may have to invent some stuff as to where exactly this um, vine goes and ends. And uh, I'm not too concerned if it's not exactly right or correct because it's going to be so fast that you'll barely see it. This is from the other vine actually, so let me get rid of that. Now this really helps if you've got a, uh, a Wacom tablet which is what I'm using right now, and uh, a pen tool. And uh, I've got a 6x8. You can get smaller ones or bigger ones, whichever fits you best. I really like the 6x8. Okay, so that's our uh, main shape. So let's call that 01. And now we need to start separating elements from this because these leaves need to grow on separately. Okay, I've made sure anti-alias is turned on in there and I'm going to carefully select around this leaf and I'm, I'm mainly interested in how it connects uh, to the vine so I'm actually going to add in a little bit of extra selection here so if I hold down the shift key I can actually carve a little bit extra into it like that now I'm going to shift control J and that will jump that selection to a new layer and uh, this little chatter right here is because of the anti-aliasing, but that's alright because when we take it off, we need that anti-aliasing to be there. When you zoom out and you're looking at it like normal on a background, you really don't notice it, so it's alright. Okay, now we're going to go to the next one and do the same. Oops, hold down the shift key. That's going to allow me to carve it out a bit better. And control shift J that onto oops. Now we gotta be on this first uh, full layer. Control shift J. That one to a new one. Go back to this first full layer and grab this one onto a new one. Now you can get as detailed as you want or as simple as you want. It's really up to you as to how long this is gonna be on screen. 
and how much uh, the people are really going to care about it. If you're designing this for uh, other designers, uh, then you will probably want to be very, very clean in your artwork. If you're designing just for uh, some corporate video, then they may not care that much. But you do have to have some pride in your work, so let me see where that chatter is coming from. Yeah, it's on this layer. Erase that a little bit. Now, I usually never use the eraser. I usually uh, layer mask everything out. Um, but in this case, it will actually take longer to render in After Effects, so I just use the eraser to get rid of stuff. So let's check how this would animate on. Now you got uh, basically this one, this leaf, this leaf, and this leaf. Now I'm going to change that order. I want the first one to be the main vine layer, and then the rest one are in order. So let's go the main vine little leaf, the next leaf, and the next leaf. Perfect. I'm going to name this one 01 Vine, and I'll uh, make sure that it stands out so that in After Effects I can see it pretty clearly. So there's that set of uh, layers. Now at this point you're probably wondering, geez, if I gotta like do this to every single shape in there? Well, um, yeah, you do you can cheat on a lot of stuff and um, so like these pieces with the two coming off you could cut that as one piece that could be one piece um, this right here with the two coming off can be one piece this with the two coming off could be one piece and these little guys in here you don't even have to do at all they can just be part of the vine so you know again it's how um, it's basically how long you want this to be animating on and if we look at our sample again, you can see that I've mirrored the two. So you only have to do it once, and then you've got both sides. And that's how a lot of this stuff is. You're going to be mirroring it or resizing it. You could even mirror this and, and make it smaller, and then it looks like you've created this hugely, incredibly complex animation, but you've really only done one part of it. So for the rest of this, you're going to be doing basically the same old thing, duplicating the full copy. Let's move that up to the top here, and let's move in for the second part, which looks like a secondary vine, let's see, you probably can't see my cursor, but a secondary vine that comes around like this, very long one, and around like that. So let's again take this, make sure we get all of its little leaves. And there's quite a few of them. Goes up through here. Yeah, that one's a pretty crazy one. Okay, I'll copy that to a new layer. Turn off the source one. And this is roughly going to be our second main part of the animation. So it's going to draw on the first one, then that one's going to come on, and all of its little leaves. So again, go in here, and uh, I think you can probably figure out from here what needs to be done on the rest of it. Okay, so let's jump into After Effects and uh, see how to animate this. So inside After Effects, let's double click anywhere in this area here, in the project window, import the PSD file as a composition with the footage dimension set to layer size, and open that guy up. If you had your dimensions set different than uh, what you needed for your uh, final output, in Photoshop then you may need to change it here. In this case I've already got it set up to that size. Let me uh, hit the control semicolon to get rid of these layer guide. And let's take a look at our timeline here. So here we've got the first vine and its associated leaves. Second vine it's associated the flower. Third vine and the fourth vine. Now normally um, naming it 
is up to you. Sometimes I go really fast and I don't, but for your sake, for your clarity, I have named them for you. Um, so let's narrow this down to just this first vine here. So what I'll do typically is just solo out those pieces. And since these are soloed, that means there's no background. So let me change my background co color. I'm going to do Control Shift B for background color, Command Shift B on a Mac. And let's just choose like a maybe a lighter gray. Okay. So there's the first part we need to animate. So the first thing I'm going to do is just offset these layers. I'm going to uh, click the first one, shift click the last one, and just kind of offset it here. And then I'll control click the top one, drag those ones, control click the top one. And now I've got it just basically a, a simple offset just to check the order of things, and that's correct. We're going to be basically using two forms of animation in this one. That's why this one's a little more complex, but hopefully when you start doing your other ones, you'll find them to be a lot simpler in comparison, which will be cool. So we're going to do two things. We're going to write on the vine, so it's going to swirl out, and then the leaves are going to grow out, so those are going to be kind of like a scaling type of thing. So for the write on type effect, we're going to use an effect called write on, and this is kind of a little known uh, filter, or a little used, little understood, but I will demystify it for you. So let's first convert this into a pre-comp. The reason is, you can see the layer bounds of this. Since we imported everything with the uh, size to be the size of the actual layer, we need this layer to be actually as big as our composition. So we'll just hit Control shift c and we will move all the attributes into the new composition. That places this into now what we have is a pre-comp. Um, we need to turn the solo back on for this so we can actually see it. There it is. Okay. Now we're going to do the write-on effect. Now for that, we need to create a mask, first of all, to tell the write-on effect where how we want it to uh, be stroked, essentially. So we're going to use the pen tool on this layer. And when you're doing the pen tool, you want to think kind of in terms of opposites. So you click and drag in the direction that you want to go. So I'm clicking and dragging this way. And the opposite end, where the curve changes the most, is going to be right here. So I'm going to click and drag this way. So I don't know if you can see the, uh, the line there, but it matches up pretty nicely. And then we've got another curve here. So I'll click and drag there. And then around here, we'll start needing to modify it a little bit. but click drag there, click drag there, and then we'll finalize it there. Now if you need to modify this, the keyboard shortcuts are the control key, which will turn your pen tool into a select um, icon and allow you to click on one of the points. And then you can keep holding down the control key to modify these. If it gets out of whack like that, what you can do is actually hold down uh, the Alt key, and that will allow you to bend just one side of, of it. So you're basically using that all the time, the Control key and the Alt key, to really finesse what you've just previously drawn. You'll also be glad to know that you don't have to have it exactly perfect, just in the general shape of this. Um, because the write-on effect is going to reveal what's underneath it, not necessarily make up the perfect line. So you'll see what I mean. Let's hit the M key on this layer, and that'll reveal our mask. Now the mask shape is what we need to copy. So you need to select the mask shape and hit Control-V, or I'm sorry, Control-C, or Command-C on your keyboard for Mac, and copy that shape. Now we're going to add the write-on effect, which is under Stylize right on. And let's take a look at this over here. And um, just to solo out the effects, I'm going to hit E key. And there's my right on effect. And we just copied that mask shape. And we can actually paste it into the brush position here. So if I do Control V and paste it, you'll notice all these keyframes it's generated for me. If I deselect them, you'll notice the middle ones are circles. These are roving keyframes. That means if I drag the last one 
they slide proportionately. Also, each one of these keyframes is a corresponding point on this vector that we drew. So we can really, really go in and tweak these settings. But essentially what this means is this is going to be really fast, and if I drag it way out here, it's going to ride on really slow. Now, we don't really see much yet, so let's take a look at making this brush size bigger. There's our brush. It's white. And what we want is to make it big enough to where it's covering uh, the vine, or it's basically over covering the vine. And then another thing is the brush spacing. We need to take that down to 0.001. That's pretty much what I do on uh, every time I use this, this little trick. And then instead of the paint style being on original image, we need it to be reveal original image. And what that will do is it will write on define. Let's hide these other guys. And let's click off of the mask. And there we go. So that's our first part. Now, the second kind of animation that we need to do is with the leaves. So let's actually move these a little bit further down. The timing is something I'm not really paying too much attention to right now. Let me hit the U key on here just to solo this. But just for fun's sake, I don't want this leaf, this first leaf to come on until it's been drawn. And sure enough, there it goes. Second leaf, good. Third leaf, okay. Let's take this first leaf. Let's zoom in a little bit on it. I'll hit uh, Control plus key, and then I'll use the space bar to kind of drag around. Now, if we were to take this and animate its uh, scale, you can see that it kind of comes off the vine. It doesn't look very good, and it's hard to control. So what we have to do first is actually grab the Pan Behind tool, which is the Y key on your keyboard, and drag this which is the anchor point, drag it into the vine, basically, where it originates. So I'm guessing this uh, little leaf is going to originate right there. And now I can actually animate its scale. So I'm going to hit the S key on this layer. I'm going to turn on the stopwatch for it, which will set a keyframe for 100% wherever. And I want the very beginning of it, so I'll hold down the shift key to kind of snap it to the very beginning of this layer. I want it to actually, oh, i got to be on the move tool for this, selection tool. I'll scale it down. Now you'll notice that it's actually scaling from that point. Of course, too big, we still run into problems, but I'm going to move it down and it's scaling from that point. So what we have... Is it growing right into position? Let's do the next one similarly. So, move behind tool, we're going to move the offset the anchor point. Going to hit the S key, set a keyframe for 100%, move back to the beginning of that, and just drag with the selection tool, drag it down into obscurity basically. So that should slide right on out. The next one. So you get the point. This is pretty repetitive. Oops. Undo that. Scale him down. That's good enough. Okay, so now you're getting a little bit of a more organic look to these things growing on. And at this point, I'd play with the timing, but just a little bit, because really the timing comes all together at the end. Let me hit the uh, space bar to kind of move this so you can see a little bit better. Next thing I'll do is probably drag these out just a little bit so they're a little bit longer. And I'll shift-click each one of them and hit the F9 key, and that's going to give me an ease on each of these. So it's basically going to ease into its final position. Now, one last thing. If 
I uh, ram preview this, it's pretty slow, so I'm going to time that out a little bit better. And also I can uh, play with this one to get that growing a little bit better. But it's fairly robotic right now. So the last thing I'm going to add to this is an in-between keyframe for this. So let's actually zoom in on this guy here. Alright, so that looks a little bit better. So let's add it right between its 100%, which is right there, and its uh, shrunken state. We're going to add right in between. We need to add a few extra frames here, and that's okay. But let's add a point where it actually grows a little bit bigger than it should be. Okay, so it's actually going from there big to small. And we'll do the same thing with this guy here. Drag this guy out a little bit. That goes out. Maybe not enough there. Not too much past the vine there. Alright. And what that's going to give us is a bit more of a bounce to it. So, it's going on really slow now. For timing, what we can do is highlight all of these guys and hold down the Alt key and drag the very last keyframe and that will kind of compress it down all of them proportionally. Okay, and then we also can draw on this line a little bit since these are roving keyframes, those are all good. Can compress those a little bit and maybe bring all of these closer in here. Let's check out that play in real time. Alright, it's coming together. Now for the second set, let's add those to the mix. So we'll add these on the solo buttons here. Add that one in. The leaves. Again, that's like one piece. That's one piece. Bring those in. And then um, we'll deal with the flower after that. But uh, basically it's the same thing. So this is going to be pre-comped. Control shift c move all the attributes into the new composition. This sets it up here. Add that to the solo. And let's Shift-click these guys and move them out of the way. So I can just work on this vine here. Add a mask to it. Shift-click and drag that way. Again, opposites of it. Shift-click and drag that way. Uh, it's going to be a tricky band there, so I'll come back to that using that keyboard shortcut, if you remember it. Here's the opposite of that, opposite of that, and maybe we'll end it right there. So I can go back in with the control key and click this right here, and maybe um, with the alt key or no key, I can alter this one independently. So that's a pretty good um, animation for that, good enough anyways. So hit the mask, copy the shape, add the right on effect and I could I could make this um, since it always defaults to the small brush size and everything I can uh, make an animation preset of it with the brush spacing 0 0.001 uh, let's keep it on original image for now and let's paste the brush position right there okay now I can see how big I need this to be so once I've tweaked this enough, go to this guy and save this as an animation preset so I don't have to keep tweaking it. But for now, we'll just keep it like this. And I'll tighten that up a bit. And then 
I will change it to reveal the image. Okay, and I like things when they're overlapping in time. So, but we'll play with that a little bit more because I want it to start drawing that on right about there. So I'm going to move that in. There we go to the next one. And we'll have to offset these guys. So as you can see, I'm basically um, doing the same thing. So I'm going to let you do the rest of it, or you can open up the final uh, After Effects file and kind of take a look at how I animated it. So here's my final and how I ended up animating it. Now, it's a little bit slower than I would usually animate it, but it's easier for you to see what's actually happening here. And then, basically, that's our base model there. I can take that and pre-comp it, um, you know, highlight everything, pre-comp it, take that and scale it down, rotate it, and start uh, basically putting it to work. I can also add effects to it like um, render either like gradients sometimes are neat to put on these things because it really um, ups it or I'll just put a simple fill on it right now maybe make it uh, a little bit of a light color so it's totally totally flexible right now and then I can do the thing where I would uh, duplicate it and maybe with the scale unlink these two and uh, just basically add a negative in front of one of them and now I've got it mirrored and so now when these animate on they're animating together looks much more complex and then for the final piece I actually added um, just a blank layer above all of this and drew a uh, an oval shaped mask Oops. double click it to get the transform but it also goes into its own little uh, its own little world there so mask is okay like that but once you add a stroke to it under the render category all the way at the bottom I can uh, change this to render on transparent maybe take it down to one and a half points and animate the end of it so let's bring this to home I can just hit alt home and it will jump it right to the beginning hit the U key here's my end property Let's say we want it to end right about there and uh, let's start it at zero so now I've got multiple things drawing on at the same time let's do a quick preview of that and it's starting to look cool and then again following on the uh, idea of duplication I just uh, hit control D to duplicate this again maybe have another one start drawing on out here and this time make it uh, a little bit smaller so I'll hold down the control key to kinda s size from the center make it a little bit smaller and maybe bring in uh, or bring up the size and make it a little bit smaller like a one point and that'll start drawing in after uh, the, the main circle draws in just adds a little bit of extra life to it and probably should draw on a little bit faster than the first circle there we go so there we have our uh, semi-complex illustration of vectors drawing on.